Hello guys and welcome back to the Minecraft Mon tutorial. In today's episode we're going to be going for custom potions. So let's get started. First thing we're going to need to do, as always, we're going to create an init for this thing. So go into init and create a new class called potion init. Inside of here we're going to need to firstly, there's two things we need to create when we're creating potions. That's the potion effect and the potion type. The potion effect is what's going to give you all the properties that the potion gives you. And the potion type is to do with the actual bottle that you drink to get the potion. So we'll start with the potion effect, public static final, potion, and your potion effect. Obviously you can change your potion effect to whatever name you want. And that's equal to a new custom potion. Control shift O to import potion. And then we're going to create this class. Put it inside of tutorial.potions. This will be a new package. It obviously extends potion and we're going to need to get the constructor. In the constructor we're going to have some parameters, the name of the potion, string name, a boolean to tell if it's a bad potion or not, so if it gives you negative effects or positive effects. So boolean is bad potion, return true if it's negative effects, int colour, so a hexadecimal or binary colour that you're going to put for the colour of your potion int icon index x and icon index y and we're going to need to super off of is bad potion and color then we're going to set the potion name set potion name quotation marks effect dot and then plus name as we set the potion to be effect dot and then your potion or effect dot whatever then set icon index, I'll explain what this is in a minute, but just said icon index x and y, and then set the registry name to a new resource location, reference.monid plus uh, colon plus name. Then we need one function in here, has status icon. If you've watched any things to do with GUIs, you'll understand that we need to bind the texture so you use minecraft.getminecraft.getTextureManager.bindTexture, new resource location, reference.monid, plus, and then it's going to be inside of textures, GUI, potion effects.png. This is a file that contains all the images for when you have the potion active, um, and the little images on the side that represents the potion effect. And I will open this file up for you now. It's a 256 by 256 file and starting down here at 197 and each icon is 18 by 18 and it will appear when you have the potion active. So you can use all of this space down here for different potion icons. And then we have to return true here. So this icon index refers to how many different icons along your icon that you want for this potion is. So that well along is x, so if it was four across, uh, you would put four for this value, and then two down would be two. I don't know it would be one because we start from zero in all program languages, so this would be three, this would be one. But since this is the first icon, um go back into the main class, name it your potion. Uh, it's not a bad potion, so false. You can choose any colour, I've shown this, this out before, hexadecimal colours, um, so you can scroll along here, uh, choose your colour and then copy it and paste it into um, this value here. Then it's going to be 0 and 0 for the icon index as we are at the first icon. And that is your potion created. Next we're going to do the things called potion types. This refers to the different bottles that you can get. So you can get the default one. You can get the um, increased duration one, you can get different levels of it and so on and so forth. For each version of the potion you need to create a new potion type. So public static final potion type uh, your potion is equal to a new potion type your potion and a new potion effect array, a new potion effect, you're going to want your potion effect and you're going to want the duration of it as well. This is the number of ticks. 2400 is 2 minutes, it's 1200 for 1 minute, and so on and so forth. So, for 
for the default, normally it's two minutes of 2,400. And then you need to set the registry name at the end to just be the same thing, your potion. And that is the default potion created. You can copy this, paste it again, and create the long version, call it long your potion. Uh, this stays the same as your potion still. We still keep the same um, effect. It's gonna be twice as long at 4,800. And we're also gonna have the registry name be long your potion. Now we need to actually register the potions. So we're gonna need a few different functions here. The main function, public static void register potions. But for that, we're going to need another function, private static void register potion. This is gonna have some parameters. It's going to have potion type default potion. We need the potion type long potion and we're gonna need the potion effect. Then we're going to use forge registries Forge registries potions dot register effect forge registries dot potion types dot register default potion and forge registries dot potion types dot register long potion. So all three of them are registered. And we can then call register potion inside of register potions and choose your potion, long your potion, and your potion effect. We're gonna to need to call register potions inside of our um, handler, registry handler, potion init dot register potions. Then the next thing you want to do um, is think about brewing your potion itself. This is going to be in a function that we've got another function we're gonna create, private static void register potion mixes. So one of them is going to be the same for everyone. It's going to be potion helper dot add mix your potion items dot redstone and long your potion. As redstone is the ingredient for extending the length of all potion. You're also probably going to want to be able to create your potion. So potion helper dot add mix. Um, to choose a random potion that's already by default. So you could use the awkward potion, which is basically just water. Potion types dot, and there's lots of different potions here. So the awkward potion is the default one that all potions come from. Then you add an ingredient, um, so an item. So you could do item in it and choose one of your items if you want, or you can choose a normal Minecraft item. I'm gonna choose my copper ingot, cause why not? And then, return your potion. And then we just call this register potion mixes function at the bottom of register potions, and that will create everything. So your potion is now in the game, but currently it won't cause any effects. There's two ways to cause effects. The first thing is inside this class, dot register potion attribute modifier. And this is to do with changing the way the player does things and it's how most vanilla potions work to do with changing speed or um, other things. So you shared monster attributes dot, and then you can change all of these different values. You can call math helper dot generate random UUID dot to string, and that will just generate um, a unique ID. Amount, how much, um, this increases the current value. Choose a random value here, it has to be a double, so 3.0 double. And operation, this is a value, I'm not sure what it is. You can just mess around with this value, I'm not really sure what it does. But I'm just gonna use two for this instance. The other way of doing it is to go into our world event class. I don't think I actually created this on screen. I basically just moved the thing from enchantment into world events. Um, and it's anything to do with the subscribe event that isn't registering. So at subscribe event, public static void, your potion active. So whatever potion name there, active. And you take in a player tick event. You declare a boolean um, is active is equal to false. And then do if um, event dot player dot is potion active um, and then do potion in it dot your potion effect um, is active is equal to true 
then if is active, then you can change any values in here. You put in your code to do things to the player when your potion is active. So you can do so many different things. You can leave it up to your imagination. If you need any help with anything that you're coding, you can just ask in my Discord and I'm sure someone will try and help you with it. I'm not gonna go over them specific in this video, but there we are. We have created our full potions. Resources next, go into source my resources. The only thing you need to do for potions is the lang, which there's five different things. There's effects.yourpotion, potion.effects.yourpotion is the normal potion, splash potion, lingering potion, and tipped arrow. All of those things you just label and name inside of ENUS lang, and then in textures GUI, you put this potion effects.png thing that I um, showed you earlier. I'll leave a template for you down below so that you can and it'll also be available in my github for you to use So you can create your own different icons. So now run the game So open up your creative inventory and go into the brewing section and above the bottom here You'll find your the potion of your potion um, The longer one and scroll down a bit you'll find the um, splash potions and the lingering potions and you'll also find the arrow. Um, it actually happens to be the same colour as regeneration, sorry about that. But you obviously can choose a different colour. And if you take one out, drink it. And now as you can see we have a potion active. And we have a little icon up in the top right. And when you open it, you get your potion with the icon and the time ticking down. I don't know how I'm going to actually demonstrate what I've got here. Um, but your potion effect should also be working. Thanks for watching guys. If you have enjoyed this video, please hit the like button down below and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching. My name's been Harry and goodbye.